With me now, Wyoming Senator John Barrasso sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, my guest now from Capitol Hill. Senator, good morning to you. Castro Great to be with you, today, Bill. Putin yesterday. Uh, it's a different world at a time when the Iranian president says the newcomers, meaning the United States, are to blame for terrorism in the Middle East because of our actions in Afghanistan and in Iraq. What do you think about that? The, the world is a lot more dangerous now than it was when Barack Obama came into office. We see Putin be, being very aggressive and expansive. We see the president uh, you know, heading the other way. The uh, president is in retreat, is being very passive. So we see all around the world the problems that the president's inaction in many ways has created. So you see a much more aggressive Putin. You see China more aggressive. You see Iran much more aggressive. And with regard to the Middle East, it was actually the withdrawal of American troops that let the void there that ISIS, uh, came, for what, which ISIS came into being. So I think, the, and the president has says a lot of things, like a reset with Russia, like he says a red line in Syria. He said Assad must go, but the facts on the ground are very different than the words that are coming out of the president's but, but you, mouth. But you know what he said yesterday in his speech. He said you have to appeal to democratic nations to come together and figure it out together, uh, appealing to the international community. Well, how's that's that, what the president says. What we out? see. Not very well. What we see is actually this axis of influence that Russia is trying to put together. Uh, and we heard of the announcement this past weekend. You have Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Russia working together, sharing information. The president keeps talking as Putin moves troops, uh, air power, fighter power, uh, into Syria. And Putin's there to prop up Assad. So you see Putin heading in one direction, the president heading in another. But that broadcast very loudly around the world about the, the waning influence of the United States and the increasing influence of Russia. Well, you know this Iran nuclear deal is going to freeze up a lot of money, $100, $100 billion for Iran. The Iranian president said, and quoting now, we are not a threat or danger to other countries. Don't worry about us. The money's okay. Well well, we know that they're going to use significant amounts of this almost $100 billion that they're going to get in Iran to continue what they've done in the past, which is support terrorism uh, with Hamas, with Hezbollah, with the Houthis uh, in Yemen. We're going to continue to see uh, Iran as a bad actor, but that's, yes, the devil that the president decided to make the deal with. I oppose what the president has done in Iran, and now the president has lifted, will be lifting sanctions so Iran can export oil, but he's not allowing the United States to export crude oil. He's making it harder on our economy and easier on their economy. So I think the president is leaving this huge well, that's... problem for our next president, whoever right. he or she may be. But there's going to be a lot at stake in terms of our own national security uh, following the election in 2016 it's and an the new president when they take office. The point about oil is very interesting. You, you wrote a piece just this week about the power of a uh, of American energy if unleashed. Yes. You call Pu uh, Putin a bully. He under only understands force and American energy is a master resource. If you were to harness it, what's the relationship with Russia and Iran after that? Well, General Petraeus was here to testify last week that talked about the fact that Putin is ultimately going to run out of money and the more we can do with U.S. exports of oil, the quicker we can cause that to happen with Russia. Russia uses energy as a political weapon we have such an abundance and supply of energy in the United States, and yet so much of that development and use is being blocked by the president. And we need to use energy because you can energy, you can get a lot of power from the barrel of oil, even much more so than you can from the barrel of a gun. You know, uh, uh, riddle me this then. If, if you believe uh, um, General Keene uh, and David Petraeus that Putin's going to run out of money, how effective can he be ultimately in Syria and taking on ISIS? and making or giving Russia a foothold back in the Middle East? Yeah. Well, Putin is going to continue to be aggressive. I don't know how long the money is going to, going to hold up for Putin. We know he uses his energy as a political weapon. Uh, we ought to be using our energy as an economic as well as a political weapon, and we can do that by exporting more liquefied natural gas, by exporting, allowing the export of additional petroleum products, including crude oil. I think that that would uh, hasten the demise of, of Putin because Putin is spread out now uh, with his investments in Syria, with his, what he's doing in e Ukraine, in Crimea, uh, all around the world. Putin's actually becoming uh, more aggressive in the Arctic. 
So he is, he is spread out, and we ought to be using our energy to help undermine him. He holds wow. other nations hostage in terms of what he can charge them. He exploits them by charging them a lot for energy. They want to buy it from us. We ought to be willing to sell it, and the president needs to step forward. Okay, Senator, thank you for your time. John Barrasso there from Capitol Hill and more meetings today. Thank you, sir, for coming back today. Thanks, Bill. All right.